My master, Mr. Gordon Bob, and myself are here in answer to the summons of His Excellency Twan Yen Sung. His Excellency Twan Yen Sung. I offer respectful greetings to Your Excellency. Why do you waste my time with a wandering vagabond of the theater? Your Excellency misunderstands. The honorable visitor is the man selected for the mission to America. If you are Gordon Cobb, why this? Well, most people know me as Ventro, the ventriloquist. And in places where Gordon Cobb might not pass unchallenged, Ventro arouses no suspicion. Hmm. I can see the wisdom of that. Be seated, please. I am told that you have faithfully executed many delicate tasks for the good of our people. But this assignment is more difficult and more dangerous than you may realize. I am fully aware of that. You also know that millions of our people may soon be facing starvation unless supplies can be obtained quickly. I understand. Unfortunately, our government has little money available to purchase food and clothing for the needy. So a small group of our people have donated their family treasures for the common good. Priceless emeralds, diamonds, and rubies, all perfect stones. The collection should bring a fortune if sold in New York. How do you expect to get it through customs over there? The duty will be paid by our countrymen in America. Who else beside you gentlemen know about this? We have taken every precaution to keep the matter secret. That is why you were selected instead of the customary channels. We know there are certain people who will go to all extremes to stop the shipment leaving our country. I am still at your service. Excellent. When you have completed the arrangements for your journey, we will deliver the jewelry and give you final instructions. May the gratitude of our people guard your voyage. Sir, I caught your act in Shanghai and Manila. Great stuff. Maybe you'd do a show for the passengers. I'm sorry. This voyage is a complete vacation. And I'd appreciate it if you'd forget my profession this trip. Why, of course, Mr. Ventrol. Or I mean Mr. Cobb. Excuse me. Oh, pardon me, sir. Your stateroom is this way. Thank you. This deck is for first-class passengers only. Glad to have you with us, Count Brett. Nice to be here. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I have a cable for you, Miss Otero. Oh, thank you. Here you are, sir. Go bring my trunk in right away, will you? Yes, sir, right away. So sorry.
Come in. I'm Parkman, the manager, Mr. Cobb. How do you do? I just came in to see if you were satisfied with the suite which your daughter and Mr. Walsh selected for you. That's very nice. Your daughter gave us to understand that you weren't arriving until tomorrow or the day after. Well, I made better connections than I expected. I'm sure she'll be disappointed. She wanted to be here to meet you. However, I think you'll find everything in order. This is the private phone we were asked to put in for you. Well, thank you. That's fine. Now, if there's anything else I can do, let me know. Oh, will you please see that my trunk is sent upstairs? Right away. I'm sure I'll be most comfortable here. Please, I'll call Miss Lane. Who is it? The porter. I have your trunk here, sir. Bring it in. Put it in the bedroom, will you? Yes, Mr. Cobb. I'm very happy to hear from you. Will you come right over? Well, I think it's more advisable if you came here. I've taken the penthouse at the Hollingsworth Hotel. All right, I'll be there within the hour. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello. It's about time you were looking me up. Well, I've been thinking the same thing about you, but I know you're so busy. Busy? Impressed to be a slave around here. It was thrilling the way you solved that Brown murder case. Well, it wasn't murder. It was suicide. I told them that from the very start. Well, anyway, you were wonderful. Oh, well, don't give me all the credit. The police in Elry Queen were quite helpful. Well, maybe so, but... Nikki, I came to see you today because I need your advice and help. Well, what's the trouble? Well, it's about Dad. I'm afraid something's happened to him. Why? Well, he returned from the Orient two days ago and then just immediately disappeared. Disappeared? Yes, and I haven't even seen him. I expected him this morning and they told me at the hotel he checked in two days ago. Well, uh, maybe he had some business to dispose of before getting in touch with you. But that isn't like that. He would left word for me or something. Did you report to the police? Oh, no. No, I, I wanted to talk to you first. Uh... Excuse me just a minute, Shooter, will you? Uh, sit down. Mm -hmm. Mr. Queen seems to need me. Uh -huh. Did you ring? All right, big shot. Where's that chapter I dictated to you yesterday? I'm sorry, Ori, but I haven't finished it yet. Well, if it won't interfere with your social affairs, will you please get back to your desk and go to work? Well, that stuff can wait. A friend of mine's here to see you. See me? Sure away. Go back to work. She's gonna be a client. What are you talking about? I'm talking about Sheila Cobb. Her father disappeared just... How many times have I got to tell you I'm not a detective? There may be a terrific story behind this. I'm not looking for stories. All I need is a secretary who can type for me. But listen, the very day Sheila's father arrived from China, he vanished. You call that a story? Every day men disappear in New York. Dozens of them. Hundreds of them. Do you know where they find them? No, where? In the drunk tank. This sort of thing never happened when I worked at home. Why did I ever let you talk me into taking this office? Why well, argue about that again when there's something really important before us? The only important thing to me right now is to finish my book. All right. And this is just the place to do it. You must admit it's more efficient and better for you than writing at home. Here you come to work at regular hours. What's so charming about that? Oh, stop it and see Sheila Cobb. <laughs> Sheila! Oh, someone tried to steal my bed. Look at your hand, it's bleeding. That's a nasty scratch. Did you see them? 
No, my back was to the door, and it all happened so quickly. Come over here, and I'll put something on. I can do that, Ellery. It's all right, I'll take care of it. Now, do you agree that there's something to her story? What's a purse snatcher got to do with a missing father? Be all right now. Oh, I'm sorry this happened, Miss Cobb. Better see if there's anything missing from your bag. Oh, I don't think I've missed anything. Oh, oh it's... Oh, here, here. Oh, those came to the hotel for my father. Mr. Gordon Cobb, Hollingsworth Hotel, New York, New York. They're addressed to Sheila's father. Uh, that's what Miss Cobb just said. May I see one? Uh, they told me at the hotel that one came yesterday afternoon and one came this morning. Looks as if there's a calling card in this one. Can we see who sent them? Shall we? Oh, yes, please do. Appointed place, serpent. Appointed place, pig. Evidently somebody dislikes your father. Did you ask the clerk if your father had any callers? Yes, I did, and there weren't any. Suppose we go over to your father's hotel, Miss Cobb. been there? Why, no, miss. What are you doing here? I just brought back a suit he had cleaned. Mr. Cobb's my father. Have you seen him? Why, no, I haven't. Uh, excuse me. seems to be in order. Apparently, your father intended to stay here. Obviously, or he wouldn't have unpacked. Come in. We've come for the trunk, Sam. Where are you taking it? He ordered a ship to Chicago. Hold to call for it. See, I told you. You might have had to go out of town on some business. Just a minute. That truck should be empty. Cobb's clothes are hanging in the closet. Let's open it. Have to break the lock open. Give me police headquarters, Inspector Queen. Robbery was the motive, and the crime was committed to steal whatever this jewel box contained. Whatever it was, it must have been very valuable. Murderer didn't even take the money that was in Cobb's pocket. Sanders, your alibi that you came to work here only this morning doesn't mean a thing. Well, my son Ellery caught you sneaking out of Cobb's bedroom, but unfortunately, you were allowed to leave the apartment without being searched. Now, where did you hide the stuff? I told you, Inspector, I just brought back his suit. I didn't know Cobb. I've never even seen him. He was sent up to deliver a suit. Really answer that. I'm Harry Walsh, Inspector Queen phone for me. Come in, Mr. Walsh. I'm so sorry, Sheila. I wasn't at my office when you called, but I came as soon as I got your message. Sit down. Thank you. Miss Cobb tells me you managed her father and booked his act through the Orient. Yeah, that's right. But you had charge of his personal affairs here in the United States. Yes, I did. Well, how was he fixed financially? Oh, very well. Would you please excuse Miss Cobb before we go into that further? You can wait downstairs, Miss Cobb, until we need you. Thank you. I'll see you down at the lobby. Never mind, Elry. I'll see her to the lobby. I can't understand why Gordon didn't contact me the minute he arrived. He didn't even call his own daughter. Well, nobody asked you, Billy. 
Eddie, what kind of an act did this man Cobb have? He was a ventriloquist. You mean to say he was able to live like this on what he earned throwing his voice around in China? No, not exactly. He was somewhat of a soldier of fortune. Managed to meet the right people at the right time. Well, what brought him to New York? Oh, he came on some sort of an important mission. His letter said that if he put this deal through, he'd retire. Deal? Well, what sort of a deal? He didn't say. Could it be smuggling? Certainly not. Well, we found this empty in his bedroom. Have you any idea what might have been in it? No, sir. Inspector Queen, will you step in here a minute, please? Sure. Excuse me. I'll be right back. He was strangled. Looks like he's been dead for two days. The murderer left a long scratch on his throat. Yeah, looks as though they got him right after he checked in. Here's the removal order to take him to the morgue. I'll send the boys right over. Well, I don't want this body taken out till late tonight. Why not? I'm not doing anything this afternoon. I'd, I'd like to perform the autopsy. Well, that can wait. I don't want the newspapers to get a hold of anything about this yet. Well, you're the doctor. Mr. Parkman, will you come here a minute, please? Look at this. Dad, come here a minute. Do you know if this pane was put in recently? It wasn't put in by us. We'd have painted the putty to match the trim. Then that's how the murderer got in. Of course. He wanted Cobb's death to remain undiscovered as long as possible. That's why he put the pane back. Well, that fits in with his idea of shipping the corpse to Chicago. You're right, Dad. But it doesn't look like the bellboy. He wouldn't have broken in when he could use a pass key. <laughs> Run along, son, and hop your bells. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Keep your mouth shut, though. Don't forget that, Sanders. I won't, sir. Do you want me any longer, Inspector? No, but you can send that expressman up. He's still waiting downstairs. All right, good day. I get it. You ship the empty truck to Chicago, and when somebody calls for it, no, it goes to headquarters. Dad, you better look for a Chinaman, or a Chinese woman who possibly followed Cobb across. Oh, yeah, that, uh, that reminds me. Who are uh, Cobb's Chinese friends in New York? I don't think he has any. Well, he must have. Look at that. Appointed place, pig. Appointed place, serpent. Poison pen letters. Looks like some sort of a code. What makes you think a Chinese sent them? These were written with a brush instead of a pen. Only an Oriental would use a brush for writing. I still don't think that Cobb knew any Chinese in New York. Well, that's all, Mr. Walsh. You can tell Miss Cobb we won't need her anymore today. I'll be glad to. Good afternoon, gentlemen. There's another thing you should look for, Dad. What? Something a ventriloquist always carries. A dummy. Well, I'm afraid you're right this time, son, and I'm glad you're tagging along with me. Sorry, Dad. I've gone as far as I'm going. Now I get my secretary and go back to work. Come right in. Thanks. Sardinia? Yes, thank you. Keep the change. Oh, thank you. Call me a cab. Taxi, please. No, you don't. It took me ten minutes to get you out of that lobby. You're not going back now. What's your ticket? Thank you. Get in, Nikki. The way you order me around, anyone would think I was your wife. Yeah? Listening to you, a stranger would assume you were.
Mr. Smith in? Yes, sir. He just got here. And he wants to see you and how. Pardon, Mr. Smith, but the gentleman that you've been expecting is here. Zoom me out, brother. Okay. Cops moving. I just saw an express man pick up his trunk. To take it to police headquarters. Cobb's dead. Dead? Stop acting. You killed him yourself. Yeah. And where did you get all this information? From the police. They sent for me when Sheila Cobb told them that I had managed their father's affairs. The father's affairs, huh? So that's it. When Cobb complained about the way you took care of his money, you bumped him up and tried to pin it on me, huh? I had it all figured it out pretty, didn't you? Stop talking like a fool. I haven't seen Cobb since he arrived. I don't believe you. You got the stuff all right, and you figured to keep it by getting me out of the way to take a murder rap. But you're not going to get away with it. You'll split and split quick. Now listen to me. Brother. I'm not listening. I'm doing the talking. Quiet. Want them to hear you in the next room? Sit down. Have a drink. I'm not settling you for a drink or a cigarette. All right. Now, believe this. This is on the level. I didn't get a thing. Someone's beaten us to it. Unless Cobb got rid of everything the moment he landed. He certainly did not. He wasn't out of my sight. Did he declare anything going through customs in San Francisco? Nothing of any value. He must have smuggled the stuff in. It must still be hidden in his room. You better go back there tonight and give the place a thorough search. Maybe you're lying, and maybe you're not. But if you aren't, be smart and call this thing off. I don't like the looks of it. You don't mean that. This trip is your idea in the first place. It's cost me plenty of money. And uh, think of all we stand to make. What if I get caught? You won't. Police are through at that hotel. They're hunting for a Chinaman that sent Cobb letters. You won't have any trouble. Believe me, I'm telling you the truth. All right. But before I go, I wanted to tell you just one thing. You're smart, Walsh. Very smart. See that you don't get too smart with me. Get me? Could you have missed him in that crowd at the station? Was it possible that she had failed to recognize her own father? Shirley Cummings' eyes were troubled, even a little frightened, as some grim foreboding crept into her mind. You're certainly making that typewriter say, Uncle. Uh, I'm trying to make up for lost time. How do you like it as far as you go? I think it's great. Thanks, Nikki. It's nice coming from you. Uh, uh, I haven't proofread it yet. Well, that's all right. I'll forgive you a few undotted eyes. The Mandarin's Net by Nikki Porter. Now, listen, Elry. You said there wasn't a story behind the Cobb case. I'm only trying to prove to you that there is. Not on my time, you won't. You're taking a very silly attitude. Did you think I was going to give up my own career just because I came to work for you? where it'll land anyway. Now get busy and do what you're paid to do. You can phone for a new secretary. It'll be a pleasure. Don't come begging me to help you again. Yes, I know and I'm well off. Why don't you answer your phone? Why don't you? come to your office right away. I must see you. Oh. oh well, I'll, I'll have to come to your apartment. I, I've quit here. Good. Why don't you hang up your phone?
And he's still working for the paper. Thanks a lot. Well, your editor confirmed it. This bellboy, ex steward and whatnot, actually is a reporter. But why didn't you tell that to Inspector Queen when he questioned you? Because I didn't want to spoil my chance to get an exclusive story that I'd gone halfway around the world to get. You mean that you knew someone intended to kill Sheila's father? Oh, certainly not. But I learned in China that Mr. Cobb was leaving for New York on a secret and important mission, so I followed him. Did you find out what it was for? No, I didn't. That's why I came to see you, Miss Cobb. I thought perhaps you could tell me. I'm sorry, but I haven't the slightest idea. Didn't you find out anything on that trip? Yes, I found that two other people were also interested in Mr. Cobb. Who were they? A Count Brett and a Miss Otero. Leela Otero. She's been a good friend of my father's for years, but he never even mentioned a Count Brett in these letters. Well, I don't know what's become of Miss Otero, but... Brett is at the Hollingsworth in room 1125. I, I didn't know that when the police questioned me. Hmm. Inspector must check on him. I'm sure he's on the wrong trail now. Well, tell him. Uh, if you can do it without mentioning my name. But I don't see how that's possible, do you, Nicky? That's easy. I'll phone him from there and say that I saw the Count lurking around, and I followed him to his room. I want a chance to look that penthouse over alone anyway. Oh, but, Nicky, you can't go over there by yourself. Oh, there's nothing to be afraid of, Sheila. After all, we're only inventing the story about the Count prowling around. Well, I'll, I'll keep in touch with you. All right, thank you. The police guard. Maybe he went out for a bracer. Well, what are you waiting for? Cobb won't come out to greet you. She's the time 
woman the inspector's looking for. Don't let her get away. Call the police. That's just what I'm going to do. Sit down over there and don't start any funny business. for the inspector. Good night. See you again. Thought I told you to let Gorman win tonight. I did. He won a little. Oh, he did? Well, okay. And he'll bring other suckers. You know, you gotta let these chumps win as much as they lose once in a while. They'll know they're being taken. <laughs> Don't worry. They'll be back all right. And bring other fish with them. Boss, His Highness is here again, sir. You didn't find anything, did you? No. And I certainly wouldn't have gone there if I'd known they hadn't removed the body. Well, that's peculiar. I only got started when the place began to look like a convention hall. What do you mean? Three men called for the body and two women started a free for all. Women? Fighting? Who were they? I didn't stop to ask them. Suppose the police had grabbed me there tonight. We'd both go to the chair. Just what do you mean by that? I'm willing to play ball with you, but I'm not going to show my face around that hotel again. All right. All right, set up a couple of highballs, will you? Yes, sir. Coming up. You can sleep here tonight, and I'll send with her after your bags in the morning. That suits me fine. I'll answer it. Oh, come in. Well, what are you doing here? I've caught the Chinese Elry told you to look for. Well, where's the man on duty? He was out when I got here. You're the police arrest this girl. Arrest me? I'll arrest the both of you. Say, Prouty, what's this all about? See who that is. Are you all right, Nikki? I'm glad I got here in time. She was talking to me on the phone when she was attacked. I heard her scream. She did that to fool you. She's a thief. I caught her sneaking around here and prying into everything. We know she's not a thief. What I can't understand, son, is why you allowed her to mix up in police affairs again after you had fired her. Did he say he fired me? Did you? Did you dare say that? Oh, uh, uh, now, just a minute, Dad. Now, after all, Nikki has accomplished quite a lot for you tonight. Well, I'm through now. I won't lift a finger to help you any more on this case. Do you suppose she meant that? Let's hope so. Go after her, Prouty, will you, and take her home? Why pick on me? She's not my headache. Now do what the master mind tells you, Prouty, and run along, oh, run along. Right. All right. Suppose you sit down, Miss, uh, Miss... What is your name? Miss Ling. Hmm. Well, when did you arrive here from China? I was born in New York. I've never been to China. No? Well, what were you doing here in the apartment? I refuse to answer that. <laughs> Young lady, you're not in much of a position to refuse to answer anything. I insist on the privilege of counsel before I make any statements. 
That's a deluxe speech for a crook hollering for a mouthpiece. <laughs> you can call your attorney from headquarters. Here's your hat, son. Come on with me, Miss, uh, Miss, oh, Miss Ling, that's it. Turn out the lights, Sergeant. Are you paying for them? You can stay here until McGrath gets back. Really, I'll take care of that bird in the morning. with a sheet over your head. Me? With a sheet over my head? In a closet? Did I have a sheet over my head? Was I in that closet? What was I doing in there? That's what I'm asking you, and you better have a good alibi or else. Now I remember. Did you catch him? Where is he? What'd you do with him? Catch who? The guy who hit me and put me in the closet. Did someone hit you? Did he hit me? He killed me. It was the worst experience I ever had. It's all coming back to me now. What happened? Well, you see, I had to go into the bathroom to wash my hands. Yeah. And when I come out, I saw that window open. Yeah. Well, I sneaked over like this. Very, very carefully. I waited. Finally, a six-foot giant stepped through the window. He did? I stepped in front of him like that. Yeah. I said, what do you want? He said, who wants to know? I said, I do. He said, who are you? I said, I'm a detective. He said, I don't believe you. I said, well, there's my badge to prove it. And the minute I put out my hand, he conked me on the jaw. He did? Well, we started to go at it. It was nip and chuck for about 20 minutes. I was getting the best of him. Yeah. Finally, he grabbed me by the throat. Yeah. We fell to the floor. We started to wrestle. It was nip and chuck, nip and chuck. First I was on the bottom, and other times he was on the top. It was a terrible... Never old... mind about that. How did you get in that closet? I'm coming to that right away. Finally, I broke away, and I run. He started to chase me around the room. He chased you? Yes. Why didn't you chase him? I never thought of that. That's what I should have done. He said, stop or I'll shoot. I stopped. He said, throw up your hands. Then what did you do? I picked up a face like this. Yes? He grabbed it away from me. Then what happened? He hit me over the head like this. And that's all I remember. Way, please. Have a chair, Miss Ling. Thank you. Your story has been substantiated through the embassy in Washington and the consulate here. Sorry we had to detain you, but you had no right to prowl around that penthouse. You should have come to us. I was pledged to secrecy. I know. And had to avoid publicity. All right, we won't hold that against you, but your friends in China should have used a public carrier and all this would have been avoided. The banks and express companies could never manage to get the jewels out of China. Well, cop may have got them out all right, but he didn't deliver them to you. He wasn't supposed to. He left them in the customs house in San Francisco. What? Why, certainly. The duty will amount to over $300,000. Mr. Cobb was only supposed to bring me the customs receipt. $300,000? Can you pay that? Yes. With money raised here by Chinese sympathizers. And what do you suppose was in that jewel case we found? Something personal. The thief that took that took the custom receipt, too. And thanks to Ellery, I'm still looking for a foreign Chinaman and a ventriloquist dummy. Come in! Telegram, Inspector. Well, maybe this will help us out. It's from the collector of customs of San Francisco. Gordon Cobb paid duty on one jade necklace valued at $400. Nothing else declared. Collector of customs. I told you he was a smuggler. He must have run that stuff through, planning to collect that duty money from you as a bonus. That's not hay. Almost half a million dollar bonus. 
Could he have been stupid enough to think that I would have paid him without a clearance receipt? Apparently he was, unless he intended to sidestep you and peddle the stuff himself. It all sounds so impossible. Why did he phone me then immediately after he arrived in town? I can't answer that, but the fact remains the stuff is missing. Now give me a list of everything he was bringing you. I'll have to go home and get it for you. Sergeant Beely, let her go with you. We have broadcast a description of all the missing articles and order the arrest of anyone trying to dispose of any one of them. Thank you, Inspector. All right. I'm Mr. Queen. Were you girls all sent over by the employment agency? Yes, but the girl inside said the position was taken. Oh, she did, eh? Well, we'll see about that. The job's still open. Just step inside, please. Sit down, girls. The position's still open. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Queen. You're a little late this morning, Mr. Queen. Yes, but not too late. Come inside a minute, will you please? wasting any time filling my shoes, were you? You quit last night, didn't you? It's not what you told your father. But I've forgiven you for that. <laughs> and now you want your job back again? No, I never thought of it as just a job, Elmer. Well, that's the trouble, Nikki. What I need is a secretary, not a collaborator and a female detective. Very well, Elry. I promise to be nothing but a good secretary. Well, how do I know you're going to keep your nose out of police affairs? Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. There's something I forgot to tell your father. There you go again. Well, I hate to see him running around in circles. I suppose he needs you to keep him straight. He should look for a man named Brett who sailed from China on the same ship as Mr. Carr. And uh, where shall I tell him to look? Manhattan or the Bronx? No, sir. Room 1125 at the Hollingsworth Hotel. Where'd you get all this information? I saw him lurking around the penthouse last night, and I followed him to his room. Then it was Brett who slugged McGrath last night at the penthouse. What? Yeah, McGrath, the police guard, was slugged at the penthouse last night. If you saw Brett there, he must have done it. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, it's too bad I didn't get there sooner. I'll call Dad. Oh, what about those girls out there? They'll bite my head off. No, they won't. I'll tell them. Count Brett's room. Get his clothes, please. Spill it in. Well, have you got everything? Yes, sir. What do we do with Count Brett's laundry when it comes back? Wear it. Well, let's go. Yes? I'm ready to dictate another chapter. Hello? Yes, he is. Just a moment. Yeah. your father on the phone. Put him on. Hello, Dad. Brett's checked out, but we've got a description from the hotel clerk, and we're looking for him. Brett's flown the coop. Well, I really called you because another one of those messages came for Carl. What does it say? Appointed place, right. Write this down. Have forgotten appointed place. Come to my hotel Wednesday. Monkey. That's right. Put it in a two-column ad in the Chinese daily newspaper. And be sure it's printed in Chinese. I see that he does it right away. I think Ellery's gone nuts. Never mind what you think. Put it in the paper.
told you I done rung this bell once, but ain't nobody home. Mr. Ritter never leaves in the morning. That's what I thought, but he's sure enough out now. All right, I'll get you Mr. Brent's bag. Ritter told me somebody would call for them. Up in this. Or if not, Brett, his baggage. How about it, Inspector Twain? Your men won't let us in. It's a little later, boys, a little later. There's one you won't be able to keep out of the newspapers. Morning, Inspector. Morning, Sarge. This is the janitor. It was him that reported it. What was this fellow Ritter's business? I don't know, sir. He wasn't much of a talker. He's been living here about three months now. But all I know about him is he kept late hours and never had any visitors. Well, you stay right here in the building. We'll want you later. Looks like he died from a skull fracture, from a blow. I feel like I've seen that guy before. Well, you ought to know, Vili, the description you got from the bellboy who handed over Brett's bags yesterday fits with it perfectly. Get the light switch, will you, Billy? Why? It ain't dark. Don't argue. It don't work. Okay, it's on. I told you to look for The ventriloquist dummy. Boy, how do you like that? Look at this. I'll bet you that that was Cobb's treasure chest. Yeah, but Brett emptied it. Why did he... Why did he leave this? Probably too hot. Mm -hmm. Right of the inscription on the clasp. Well, that Ling girl can tell us what that said. Leave the bridge work alone, Vili. You know, I used to be able to throw my voice once. Listen to this. How do you like that, Ellery? Marvelous. Sounds just like it's coming from a dummy. Drop that and go over and get those bags. Yes, sir. Yeah, Britt and Ritter were partners, and they got into an argument, and Brett knocked it. If he had, Brett wouldn't have been dumb enough to have sent the colored boy for the bags. If I could only remember where I've seen you before. I know where you've seen Ritter before, Vili. In a gambling house. Do a couple of decks of cards add up to a gambler? Maybe he played solitaire. Not with marked cards. Well, that don't make sense. These cards are all pin marked. These are practice decks. You've heard of card shops sitting before a mirror practicing for hours every day? Mm -hmm. You would keep the fingers agile like a pianist. Sounds nuts to me. How could a guy palm a pen? I'm sure he didn't. This is a gambler's ring. The cards were marked with this. That's Corey the Magician. It's been ten years since I've seen him on the stage. But I know it's him. The great Corey. You wouldn't remember him, Ellery. I've heard of him. He was a headliner for years. Why don't you ask Walsh what Corey's been doing lately? He's a booking agent. He might know something about him. That wouldn't help us find Brett. I think you're wrong hanging this job on Brett. <laughs> but it didn't take him long to knock Cobb off and get away with that jewelry. Whoever killed Ritter sneaked into the closet and removed the fuse to make sure he wouldn't be seen. 
If Brett and Ritter were partners, wouldn't Brett have come openly? Well, I couldn't answer that, but we've got a lot to do here yet. All right, I'll get out. Let's go to work. Well, if you find Brett, hold him for me and say, listen, he's about five foot ten, weighs about, oh, 150, middle age, dark complexion, no scars, and speaks with a foreign accent. Oh, wait a minute, Alry. I've got something to show you. There's that ad of yours right there. What does it say? Uh, why, it says, uh, just what you told me to put in it. Then we'd better all be at the pet house a little before three this afternoon. Well, why three? You didn't mention putting any particular time in the ad. The last word in the ad is monkey, isn't it? Sure, but I thought that was your signature. You would. <laughs> The ancient method of reckoning time in China divided the day into 12 parts. Each of these periods were given the name of an animal. For instance, the hour of the serpent is between 9 and 11 a.m. The hour of the pig is between 9 and 11 in the evening. And all of those notes the cob meant a certain time, eh? Our ad reads, come to my hotel, monkey. The hour of the monkey is between 3 and 5 in the afternoon. Boy, you sure get along. How do you find out about those things? about you. Oh, that's good. I was just thinking about you. You gave me a description of Brett after you saw him leave the penthouse. I'd like to have you give it to me again. Uh, he's uh, blonde, uh, tall, heavy set, about six feet, I'd say. Uh, he's well groomed. He has uh, blue eyes and uh, he's around 30. Mustache? No, no, I, I don't think... Yes, yes, he has. You'd better see an eye specialist. Brett's about 45, weighs 150, is not tall, has dark hair and dark eyes. You sure we're talking about the same man? I'm certain we're not. Now tell me the truth. You never saw Brett in your life. Somebody told you about him. Who was it? Sanders, the bellboy at the hotel. Only oh, God understand he isn't a bellboy. Do you know what you're talking about? Certainly, he's a Chinese reporter. I mean, he's a reporter from China, and he follows Cobb all the way to New York. Get your hat and coat. We're going down to headquarters. What for? You're going to tell Dad all about Sanders. Not me. I gave you my promise I was through with this case, and I intend to keep it. Don't worry. You're not going to have anything to do with any case again when Dad finds out what you've been covering up. He'll have you fitted for a cell. You sit there. Hello, Jack. Is Dad in? Yes, sir. He's in there. I said sit there. You remember Sanders the bellboy, don't you, Larry? Yes, I remember Sanders. In fact, that's what I came here to tell you about. Oh, Nicky finally told you the truth about it. What Dad? made you come here now? He read about the Ritter murder in the newspaper. What do you know about Ritter? Was he after Cobb, too? Well, I don't know, but I saw him taking Brett's bags from the hotel. I would have reported it yesterday, only I figured the police were already watching Brett. When Miss Porter told me about you, it all sounded very ridiculous. A reporter chasing a will-o'-the-wisp story from China to New York. Yeah, that's probably the dumbest thing anyone ever did. You said it. His editor fired him for it. You say you took the trip without your paper's consent? Yeah, but if I could deliver a story, everything would be all right. You ran into a murder I wouldn't let him write about. Oh, look, Dad, after all, Sanders gave you the lead to Brett. I think he's entitled to a break. Well, could you get your job back if I told you the real inside story of the cop murder? Oh, yes, I'm sure I could. Well, we'll see what can be done about it. Well, thank you, Inspector. Uh, Mr. Ellery Queen wants to see you. He says he knows you. Let him come in. Glad to see you. Have a chair. Thanks. It's my idea you might know something about a magician called Corey. Have you ever booked him? Hmm. Corey, yes. Police just found him murdered in his room. Murdered? Know anything about what he's been doing lately? Who his friends were? Where his family is, if he has one? Uh, it's years since I've seen him. When Vodil cracked up, he dropped out of sight like so many old-timers. It's too bad you don't know much about him. By the way, Dad asked me to tell you he expects to arrest the Chinese today who's been mailing those messages to Cobb. Oh, who is he? You can meet him at the penthouse this afternoon. 
Dad thought you might be interested, and your knowledge of Cobb's affairs will be useful to us. Well, I'll be glad to come. What time? A little before three? Oh, fine. Sorry, I can't give you any information about River. But I'll get in touch with some of the boys who may have known him. Thanks. See you later. Queen, please. Hello, Dad. You better have Walsh shadowed. He was in on both murders. You're crazy. I am not crazy. Just gave himself away. He did? How? He called Corey what? Yeah. But he promised to come to the hotel at 3 o'clock. Now, listen. He may remember his slip and try to run out on us. Send someone out to cover his house, too. You got all that? Yep. Well, what makes you think Walsh is involved? He denied having seen or heard of Corey for years, and then a few minutes later he gave himself away by referring to him as Ritter. Well, do you think he killed Ritter? No, but he may be involved in it. Mister, will you tell this policeman that I ain't done nothing and let me go, please, sir? Come on, come on. We searched Walsh's apartment, and here's all we found. Count Brett and Roy Johnson. Uh, Mr. Commissioner, I ain't done nothing. That's what His Royal Highness says, too. Seems like we're going to send a couple of innocent men to the chair. Take him in the back room. Back room? Come on. Back room? I don't want to go on. in the back room, come Mr. On. Commissioner. I don't want to go in the back room. I've been in the back room before. Please, Mr. Commissioner. Now, I don't want to come back shut here. Shut up. Please. Shut up. That'll be it. Yes, sir. Feel at home here, Brett? <laughs> you should, because this is where you killed Cobb. Then last night, you went to Ritter's room and murdered him. I did not kill Cobb, and I was never in Ritter's room. Well, how did it happen that your bags were there with the dummy in one of them and this necklace? You see this uh, clasp on this necklace? You see that Chinese inscription? Well, translated, it reads, to Sheila from Dad. Cobb intended this necklace for his daughter as a present. It's a frame-up. You never found that necklace or that dummy in my luggage. But you did have Ritter sneak your bags out of this hotel. Uh, you write about them bags, Mr. Commissioner, but I ain't done nothing. Mr. Walsh is here. Well, send him in. Boss, I'm sure is glad to see you. Will you tell this commissioner that I only work in your card room and I had no parts in them killing? Will you, boss? Please tell him, boss. Will you, please, sir? What's this man talking about? Ain't no time to get high and mighty now, boss. Cause you know I ain't told him nothing. But this commissioner here knows too much. Your faithful servant here has made it very easy for you to tell us the rest. Oh, Miss Lane, come in. This is Mr. Sanders. He's a reporter. Ms. Ling represents the Chinese interests in this country. Oh, how do you do? Won't you sit down? Thank Inspector you. will be right in. Do you know why your father asked me to come here? Yes, we're expecting the sender of those code messages. Do you know who he is? No, but we're convinced he's a Chinese who doesn't know Cobb's dead. Do you think he knows something about the jewels? That's why you were asked to come here. He's a few minutes early. I think he'll have more confidence if he sees you first. Would you mind letting him in? You said you... Well, Sheila made me bring her to save you from making a serious mistake. Please ask your father not to draw Mr. Walsh into this terrible affair. I'll vouch for him. Sheila doesn't have to stand for her father's best friend being humiliated in this fashion. Oh, Ellery, Walsh and Brett admit they were out to trim, Cobb, but they say they didn't get anything. Give us a couple of more minutes and we'll change their mind about that, too. Outside, outside. Oh, 
我代表中国朋友请及先生领咗首诗过嚟。我请你坐，等阵。Mr. Cobb， what do you want with Mr. Cobb？ I talk only with Mr. Cobb. My business very important. You tell Mr. Cobb, Lee Su see his message. 你坐，你等一等呀。Mr. Queen. That man was on the boat. What do you want with Mr. Cobb? I don't tell. Come back by and by, see Mr. Cobb. He's dead. Dead? Where are those jewels? Ah, Gu Nong, ah, he told me that he was going to sell them. I don't know where to sell them. He found them in the river. Now, let me sell them for you. I know got jewels. On ship, my master, Mr. Cobb, he say, Li Su, take them. Full possible high binders. I put them in very safe place. You know what you want to do? It's in the big house. The big house is put in the water. You turn them over to the customs officers in San Francisco to be sent in bond to New York. I try to see Mr. Cobb. Mr. Cobb, give him kind words. I try to see Mr. Cobb. Give him kind words. I try to see Mr. Cobb. I try to see Mr. Cobb. I try to see Mr. Cobb. Give him customs received. I'm going to go to the hospital. Give this to my father, Miss Ling. You'd better come by his office tomorrow. The receipts in Lee Su's name, so there'll be some formalities to comply with. Thank you so much. And I want to thank you for all our people. I'm going to get my turn to help us out. Oh, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. Chill out. All right, all right. Stick to your story and see if you can make a jury swallow it. How about me, Mr. Commissioner? I ain't done nothing. I'll attend to you later. Well, Walsh admits that Ritter worked for him, but he says he wasn't supposed to know about any scheme between him and Brett to rob Cobb. But he must have found out and declared himself in. Well, how did it happen that Ritter hid the necklace and the dummy in Brett's bag? He didn't. The man who killed him did. But it wasn't Brett. Well, I don't follow you. Let me see that ring of Ritter's a minute. This ring was used to mark cards. There's a sharp point on the inside of it. There was a long scratch on Cobb's neck. It was made by this ring when Ritter attacked and strangled him. You mean Ritter killed Cobb? There's no doubt of it. The back of Sheila's hand was scratched the same way when he tried to snatch her bag. You'll find a similar mark on the person who finally killed Ritter. Where did he scratch you, Sanders? Here. Don't tell me you did that shaving. I didn't mean to kill him, but I found the stuff in Ritter's room and put it in Brett's bag to bring it to you. And Ritter trapped me in the closet, and, and I, I hit him in self-defense. Well, I suppose you prove that to the judge. Of course, you know, I'm only the police inspector. Really? Take Sanders with you. Here's the answer to our ad. Oh, a custom receipt, eh? For everything Cobb was supposed to have smuggled in. Miss Ling will see you in your office about it tomorrow morning. But we'll have to tell Miss Cobb. I'll let you tell her right now. Yeah? My father will see you now, Miss Cobb. Oh, thank you. He's seen more than enough of you. You wait here. Sit down, Miss Cobb. There's a lot of things that I... that I have to explain to you. I don't want to go to no prison. I don't want to go to no prison. Vicky! Vicky! Mister, you tell him I don't want to go to no prison. That electric chair's gonna be awfully hot. Yeah, mister, you can take him. He ain't no friend of mine. Look at <laughs> What's the idea of hiding from me? I wasn't hiding. I thought maybe you'd seen enough of me, too. Oh, let's stop all this. Flip the words right out of my mouth. Thank you. 